Hi guys, hope you're all well. Okay, today, well, we're going to do a cane. Yes, I'm going to do a cane. Don't faint. Um, my lovely friend Sarah, who makes the cutters and stuff at Happy Hands UK, posted a video, um, maybe 10 days ago now, might be a bit longer by the time you're seeing this video, and she called it a flowing water cane. And as I was watching it, um, I just thought, I wonder if that would look in black and white. And then I thought, oh, I wonder how it would look in black and white pearl. And then I, I just, neurons firing went and I've come up with a bit of an idea. Now, I haven't practiced it. This is this is what I'm doing now. Uh, you know me, I like my little experiments and I like sharing those with you. Um, so, now bear in mind guys, you can use whatever colours you want. Use your favourite colours. But, of course, I'm going to use my favourite colours, which happen to be black and white. Uh, but I'm going to use the pearl because I think the shine will give it a bit of something else as well. So, I'm going to use just the um, pearl white and the black in the pearl and what I'm going to do is cut a third off each block and I'm going to mix so I'm going to end up with a black a grey and the white and then we're going to skin a blend them all together but I will take you through the steps um, so I'll go and get this unwrapped uh, and I'll mix my I'm, I'm going to use two packs guys but I'm just going to cut a third off this one a third off this one mix those two together to get the colour in between and then we're going to skin a blend white grey uh, black, grey and white so I'll go and cut this bit off and I'll mix it then we can put the skin a blend together see you in a min Okay guys, so I've got my white conditioned, I've got my black conditioned and that is my black and grey mixed and I did add a little bit extra from some scrap of white pearl I had just wanted it to be a touch lighter uh, and I'd, it wasn't a lot guys, just had a ball of it here and I just cut the ball in half so not a great deal more um, Obviously, it depends on what colours you're using. I just wanted this a touch lighter. Okay, so we're going to skin a blend. Uh, and I'm just going to... Cut my pieces in half. Like so. And this skin a blend doesn't have to be perfect, guys, for what we're doing. Um... As long as your pieces are about the same size, I think we'll be fine. Uh, but don't panic. That's the main thing. It's just fun. Just a bit of fun. Okay, let's do that that way, that that way. And I don't know which way to do this. Maybe I should have done it. Hang on. One sec put them bits back together I'm just going to cut this actually in half like that and sandwich it that way again don't worry about it guys it doesn't have to be perfect because um, of course we're going to roll it up once we've blended it so I've got I'm just going to cross that white over the grey there and I'm going to cross this black over the grey there so we should get a reasonable blend now again guys um, I don't worry too much you know unless you want some absolutely perfect um, blending then don't stress it just do what you think and what we're aiming for is Black, a bit of black on the end 
uh, a bit of white on the end and a nice bit of banding in the middle because we're going to fold that up and we're going to pass it through to make a long strip that we're going to roll up so we, um, again don't stress about it just whack this into your machine and hope for the best that tends to be what I do most of the time anyway so you know right I'm going to go and skin a blend this um, there's loads of Skinner Blend videos out there guys different ways of doing it, different ways of putting it together you know there's the teardrop method as well lots of different things uh, so go and, uh, I'll go and have a look on um, Jessima Tutorials she has some fabulous how to videos if you don't know how to do it or you're a bit um, a bit wary about doing it but I don't care I just whack it through and hope for the best I can always add a little bit black and white on the end if worse comes to the worst so I shan't stress it right I'll go and get this blended put it into my machine this way and then you just keep folding it up until you get your blend and then I'll come back and show you what I've got and show you how to fold it see you in a minute okay guys here's my blend and you could probably see here there is a couple of bands showing uh, but because of the way we're going to now pass it through and make it long um, that isn't going to matter so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold my let's do it that way I'm going to fold my piece in half I'm going to pass it through once starting at my light end or my dark end but we're going now this way so I'll pass it into your machine that way and then we're probably going to fold it again once it's elongated um, I'll just go and do that and I'll come back in a sec okay guys I've done one pass I'm now going to fold it again like this oh got stuck like this and I'm going to pass it through on a zero and I'm going to work my way down to um, I'll let you know when I come back but maybe a three or a four so we're going to end up, end up with a very long strip um, so just bear that in mind when you're passing it through your pasta machine um, you know you can always split this guys and then just join it back up if it's getting too long for you to manage uh, but I'm just going to go and pass this through the pasta machine again and then uh, I'll tell you how far I took it down when I come back see you in a sec okay guys I took mine down to a three uh, I can't fit it all on screen but I took it down to a three okay now I'm going to start at the dark end so let me turn it around and what my idea was um, was to and don't worry about trimming it or anything guys um, it just creates more waste doesn't it so what we're going to do is we're going to make some rolls but as soon as our colour starts to change we're going to stop so I'm probably going to do like maybe six inches worth of strips see how we go but starting at this end I'm just going to roll up and I can just see it getting a bit lighter there so I'm going to stop and I'm going to trim that off and pop it to one side and I'll just pull this down again so you guys can see what I'm doing and I'm going to roll again let's get that end going just roll it up again about six inches seems to be working for me and trim that off so now we've got two sausages I don't know how much clay I've got so let's have a see uh, oh I could probably get another three rolls out of this let me just double check what the size is 12 yeah I can get three out of this guys so 
I'll do uh, oh let me just move it up then I know it's about the right size so again just rolling it up to about the six inch mark and then last two let's roll this up to six inches or just thereabouts and then my last one which is a little bit thinner than the others but it will be fine okay so now we've got these logs in different shades so we're going to roll these logs out um, a little bit thinner um, again I may just trim trim this tiny bit off guys and add it to my pearl scraps but I'm not going to trim them up too much uh, because it won't really matter I don't think but I will just tidy just tidy these little tiny ends off like that and just get my log nice I'll not do them all with you guys let me just I'll do it with the black one I'm just gonna roll my log again you do what suits you best and I'll roll it to let's think I don't know how big I want this block to be um, just tap them ends again I'm going to say six inches let's do six inches then we're consistent so I'm just going to roll all my logs out to a oh, that's not six inches calf squish it back together a bit okay I'm going to roll all my logs out to about six inches each so I'll do that guys there's no point in me um, taking the time up just roll all your separate logs out to about six inches in length see you in a sec okay guys i've got all my logs rolled out let me just this one's a little bit long i'll just pinch it back up okay so can you see what i'm doing yep you can i'm just going to line them all up from light to dark make sure they're all reasonably the same length again we're not going to stress about it guys and then what we're going to do is we're going to cut each of these into two inch pieces so you can see on my desk these thicker lines are inches and I'm just going to cut them all into two inch pieces oh no I meant to say what have I done? Two, four. Ah, because the centre of my board is seven. Ignore me, guys. Um, you do. Um, I've rolled all my logs to seven inches, not six. Uh, so um, I didn't realise. I thought that was a six inch line. Uh, but I'm sure we can use those little pieces anyway okay so what we're going to do is we're just going to I'm going to start with the black I think on the bottom just going to put my logs next to each other so all my black in a line do you know what I might do I'll, using my little bit of scrap I'll just roll that bit out thin and it'll add a bit of interest won't it and I'm just going to pop that on top of there in that gap and I'm just gonna there we go then we're going to do our next color one two three And 
shall I put this sausage on or not? In fact, I know what I'll do. Sorry, guys. I'm just going to pop this sausage next to the black one underneath. It'll just add a bit of interest. So in that gap, I'll pop that other bit of the lighter colour just to fill it up nicely. And then pop that on top. And I've just got a little bit hanging at the back. Let me trim it off. Okay. So we're getting our block formed. And then... Um, What shall I do? Yeah, I'll do three sil three of the middle colour next. And I'm putting all my tatty ends to the back, guys. Then if I do trim this block up, um the all the tatty ends are at one side, if that makes sense. And then I'm going to roll my little bits up just my little bits of spare up oh that's got an herbal stuck in it I'm not putting that I'm not going to put them in guys because I've, they've got her trapped okay so now I'm just going to go one two three with my next colour and then finish with my lightest colour. Let's put that chunky one in the middle. Like so. Okay. So now we've got oh now we've got a block like this. So I'm just gonna get that shaped. Where's, I've got my little doodah somewhere, there it is. Let's just use this. It'll help it blend better, won't it? Okay. And I'll just do top and bottom as well. Okay, so now we've got this fab little block. And a bit of an herb bubble. Of course that ends a bit squidgy but I'm sure if you take a slice off the other side will be usable. You know me, I don't like any waste guys and I will use these bits of scraps that I've got to make a nice, I'll mix them together and make a nice backing for something. Right, uh, I'm just going to give this a bit more of a press just to make sure that I've not got too much uh, trapped in again guys you got you lot who do canes all the time you know I'm I'm not the world's best with them I just do me so you do you and I'll do me okay so we've got a nice block now this is very tacky so I am going to just um, pop it to one side have a little wipe up get my scraps blended um, in case I want some backing and I'll uh, see you all in a second hi guys okay this is rested a bit now uh, I thought what I'd do is I'll just take a slice off make a quick pendant with you and then I'll maybe um, do an, another video uh, making some bits with the rest of the block as I've done before because you know I, I know these videos can get a bit long sometimes the way I do them uh, I did mix my scraps up guys I've just popped it through on my leather texture mat just for a bit of backing and I've dug out um, my diamond cutters I'll just do a little diamond um, or maybe just just a diamond pendant uh, I'll see how I feel when I take a chunk off okay so I won't have to stretch this too much I don't think so I'll just take a nice chunk of this off
and I've got a couple of bubbles but they should disappear when I start rolling it uh, but can you see that oh, I'll show you on this one can you see on that face I've kind of got a gradient of color running through which I think looks pretty cool uh, I don't know what it's going to look like when it's baked guys but you know right I'll just give this a little roll and a little roll just getting it stretched out big enough for my I just want that side a bit more there we go I'll just put me six mil lolly sticks in and give it a roll and then I'll take it down to my four mil it's probably wide enough now let's turn it and stretch it the other way and the whites kind of disappeared but I think I'll be able to catch a corner of it in um, I did want to do it kind of like th oh that'll work and I can catch a bit of that white in uh, okay that's what I'm going to do I think but I may need to take it down a little bit thinner I think guys let's take it down to 3mm because I've got my back in haven't I so I'll just stretch that this way I think and take it down to 3mm I'm just double rolling guys because I want to make sure I've got that um, mark from my cutter out okay let's get this picked up and popped onto my backing let me just make sure yeah that's going to be fine i just pop this down oh i have no burnishing paper that's ah, because i had it all in my bag when i did the workshop the other week I'll just pop these on bear with me guys I'll just roll this out a bit more as soon as I've no paper to burnish it with I'll just do this instead get that top nice and smooth and I seem to have a bit of a divot in there but let's not worry about it a bit disappointed in my white have disappeared uh, maybe need to um, adjust that when I'm making the next cane but I'm going to do it like this oh would help if I took it off my back in really wouldn't it do you know I don't know where my brain goes some days guys I'm sure we all have these sort of moments but I seem to have more than most just line that cutter back up okay let's give it a little wiggle and I will do something with these up in fact shall I do a couple of little earrings as well I'll do the earrings in this dark a bit think about this cream and white when you mix it you get a really lovely hematite color so there's not really any scraps because I'll just use this again in something else okay we've got a couple of earring button earrings we've got a bit of a pendant going on uh, dome let's get it domed so I'll just get that picked up oh I really didn't want to do that pop that on there I'll probably put a veil on the back guys as I normally do I can't believe I've no paper I've got a bit of a scrap stuck there just bear with me guys I'm gonna have to get oh hang on I've just spotted some 
I can't, I can't work without my paper. You know what I'm like. I'll just give that a press onto my little egg poacher. Get that shape. Press down. Just go around that edge with my nail just to make sure that it's nice and tidy. Again, we can catch any crumbs with a, net, uh, a file, guys, when they come out. But I do prefer to be safe than sorry. Okay, let's pick these little diamonds up. I think I could just get a slight dome on them if I just pop them on the side like that I have noticed with this pearl guys you may have noticed yourselves if you've managed to use it the mica is very loose it does um, kind of spread over your surface when you're rolling and burnishing um, so it is good to just give it a quick wet sand even if you just use your finest paper because I'd noticed the other day that if you have got a subtle pattern underneath with it and the mica sits on top um, you can use that lose that subtle pattern because it's got a little layer of mica over the top does that make sense um so yeah giving them a little sand really works a treat okay guys i shall go and pop these in the oven i'll see you when they're baked i'll probably put a little bale on the back using a bit of my scrap um you've seen me do it hundreds of times so I'm not going to show it on camera um, but I'll come back when they're, re when they're uh, all done and dusted see you in a minute hi guys okay we're all baked um, this looks really cool because the mic has shifted as well so it looks really I can't even describe it, it might look a bit different when it's sanded as I've said sometimes the mic collects on the surface uh, I did pop a bale on the back as I normally do as you can see and they're just my little earrings that I made um, I realize I haven't sanded um, with you for a while guys so I thought I would just do it um, if you haven't I have got two videos with about sanding I'll pop some links up here for you uh, but sometimes I do it with nail files so I'll just take the rough edges off with this go over the whole surface with this uh, these are a bit grubby guys and then I shine it and buff it with this I have got a video about that guys if you want to go and watch it today I'm just going to use these uh, sanding pads they're like a foam sanding pad and there's a fine, a super fine and a micro fine and then I finish with my Dremel but I just thought I'd do it with you. Yeah, I've got a bowl of water off to the side to rinse off in. And all I tend to do is whip my way through the grits. Um, this is the fine one. Doesn't really need this one, I don't think. But I will just go around my edges with this one. And make sure there's no little burrs or anything. just go over them sharp points as well can you see the that's what's come off most of that's the mica um, I think I will go over this surface and just see if, what difference it makes I'm not putting a lot of pressure on guys just lightly rubbing over the surface
like so. Then I'll just do my little buttons for my earrings. Just knock them edges back. Not that there was any little bits on, I don't think. I think we caught them all, but I will do it. And I'll just give these tops a little buff. A bit more water. I tend to do it this way, guys, uh, with these wet and dry pads. And then I just rinse them off rather than having a bowl of water and having my hands in a bowl of water. I just find this easier. We all have our ways of finishing, don't we? I'll just give these a rinse. And then I'll move on to the super fine pad. Uh, these You can buy these pads everywhere, guys, in the UK. Um, you can get them on eBay and from Resin 8. Um, if you just look for the brand, which is called Indasa, Indisa, um, just have a look for the brand and you'll find some. Um, I may have a link. If I've got a link, I'll pop it in. But it'll probably just be a UK link, to be fair. And I've said this before in the sanding videos, guys, but what I tend to do is just go over the surface and it's, you can feel the sanding pad stop dragging. It starts to move over your piece smoother. And that's kind of your, you know, how you know that you've done enough. Now, to be fair, if you burnish really well, you don't need to do a lot of sanding. You could just use the micro fine and the super fine are you know similar and I just wash these in the sink Okay, that's that one. Give it a quick rinse. I rinse in between just in case there's any grains stuck to the surface. Sometimes you get um, a little grain and then it makes a mark on your clay. Okay, last pad. And as I said, these really didn't need much finishing at all. They were pretty decent. I just wanted to get that surface collection of mica off, really. Drop that in the water. Just do my little earrings. that in oh nearly put the pad in instead then okay let's use the back of this paper towel to dry it with hands were dry to be fair okay so there's our surface now and it's sanded nice and smooth obviously no shine on it yet let's just dab these pieces dry and I'm just going to go off and uh, buff it with my Dremel guys because I just find it easier that way you know some, I know some of you have a rotary tool use that or use the buffer side of your shiner buffer nail pads that brings it up pretty decent okay guys I'll go and give these a buff and I'll be back in a sec 
Hi guys, okay there we go, nice and glossy and it's really cool how the mic has shifted so I've got my little circles but I've also got bands of mica in how it's shifted it looks really cool I'm looking forward to making some oh and I've um, took the liberty of already popping some oh I'll just hold one up here I just put a little screw in eye and um, a near wire just kept them really simple like so and I've just got a bit of Boona cord here guys oh, I hope this is going to fit through oh I don't think it is going to fit through will this one fit through let me try go on go on go on go on, go on. oh it's just a bit tight got it I forget that sometimes when I'm making my little bells some of the Boona clasps that have don't like to go in and this is just one of those magnetic ones with a twist like so a bit of extra security so little pendant little earrings with that um, I wrapped it up then it wouldn't go, get covered in cat fluff I think what I'll do with the next one is I'll do a couple of slices and I'll put the white together because we've totally missed the white in this haven't we uh, and I'll make a, another set uh, a bit more involved but there's just a quick set to show you that weird that shift is bizarre you look one way and I can see the rings and I look the other way and they disappeared it's really cool right guys i'll take some nice pictures and i'll see you all in the next video bye guys